What new information about TRAPPIST-1 might the JWST bring to light? JWST is currently being constructed by NASA and has the potential to change our understanding of extrasolar planet. There is a mystery single star system that it intends to investigate in the first year of its existence. Exoplanets will take up one-fourth of JWST's working hours in the coming year, and 8.2% will be devoted to the TRAPPIST-1 star system, according to the Space Telescope's Science Policy Group, SPG. Numerous claims have been made about the finding of a wide range of things, from thermal emission to traces of water, and even signs of life, on the planets that orbit TRAPPIST-1. We spoke with the scientists in charge of leading the initial JWST investigations of this one-of-a-kind planetary system in order to better grasp what mysteries their observations would help reveal and why so much time has been spent on TRAPPIST-1. Is there anything we can learn from this little solar system about rocky planets and the potential for life elsewhere in the universe? TRAPPIST-1, what is it and how does it work? The TRAPPIST-1 star is an M dwarf, the tiniest class of star in the constellation. Astronomers have discovered seven rocky planets that orbit their home star in a tight orbit thanks to a telescope called TRAPPIST. TRAPPIST-1b, C, D, E, F, and G were the names given to these worlds. TRAPPIST-1 has piqued the interest of scientists because of its diverse set of desirable qualities. Nearly 4,350 degrees Fahrenheit is the equivalent to 2,400 degrees Celsius, and its mass and radius are orders of magnitude smaller than that of the Sun. Because of its nearness to the Sun, it can be discovered there. There are seven TRAPPIST planets, each of which orbits its host star in a reasonably close proximity. Just six times closer to the Sun is the TRAPPIST-1h, the most distant planet in our solar system, than Mercury is to our star. They are able to block off more of TRAPPIST-1's light because they are closer to the star than other worlds. According to Olivia Lim, a PhD student at the University of Montreal and the primary investigator of a JWST program that surveyed four of the seven TRAPPIST-1 planets. TRAPPIST-1's radius is barely 12% that of the Sun, she said. Lim is also the lead investigator of a JWST program that studied four planets in the TRAPPIST-1 system, including the Sun. Detecting a transit signal is easier if the star is smaller than the radius of a planet. Fortunately, there is a good thing about the scenario. Dispelling the enigma around the livable zone, a planet's habitable zone, defined as the area where liquid water can condense on its surface, includes planets like TRAPPIST-1's neighbors D, E, F, and G, because of TRAPPIST-1's extreme temperature. There is a strong possibility that these planets, if similar to our own, may have oceans of water. The characteristics of planets in the habitable zone can help astronomers better understand how many environmental factors affect habitability. It's possible that the strength of the sun's winds, a planet's density, the frequency of large moons, the planet's orbital orientation, and its spin, or lack thereof, all have a role in determining whether or not a planet is habitable. As a rule of thumb, it's feasible that a simple criterion like the habitable zone could prove useful, or it could prove to be a nuisance. Researchers at Johns Hopkins University's Applied Physics Laboratory and the Johns Hopkins University Applied Physics Laboratory, led by Jacob Lustig Jaeger, believe that the TRAPPIST-1H system offers an opportunity to test the notion of the habitable zone outside of our solar system, can be tested in this system. There is a good chance that our analysis of TRAPPIST-1 will turn up a large number of unexpected results due to the star's differences from our Sun and the planet's near proximity to it. In addition, our efforts to comprehend these facts will challenge our current understanding of planetary science, temperature, and humidity levels on Earth-like planets. JWST's next observations of the TRAPPIST-1 system will focus mostly on atmospheric reconnaissance, 
For the Trappist-1 planets, this refers to the process of determining whether or not they even have an atmosphere. In order for life as we know it to exist, an atmosphere is required, and atmospheres are capable of transporting substances that are referred to as biosignatures. Life can be traced back to these molecular observational markers. Astronomers have spent a large amount of telescope time in recent years, trying to discover atmospheres on Earth-sized exoplanets. According to Daniel Cole, an assistant professor at Peking University and co-investigator of a JWST program examining TRAPPIST-1c. A part of the JWST program, the study was carried out although we attempted to identify whether the TRAPPIST-1 planets had atmospheres that are dense and foggy or if they have no atmosphere at all. Our efforts were unsuccessful in this regard. In an effort to identify whether or not any of the TRAPPIST-1 planets have atmospheres, scientists have been using the Hubble Space Telescope since its discovery in 2017. There was no doubt in their minds that the small planets did not have hydrogen-rich atmospheres that gave them a puffy appearance. The problem was that they were unable to identify thinner atmospheres than our own. JWST, on the other hand, is able to detect subtleties that Hubble cannot. Its mirror is three times as wide in diameter and nearly six times as large in collecting area as Hubble's, to begin with. Mid-infrared radiation from cool stars, such as TRAPPIST-1, can also be detected by this instrument. In addition, the orbit of JWST is more reliable than that of Hubble. Unlike Hubble, which revolves around the Earth once every 97 minutes, JWST is permanently positioned at L2, a point in space where the Earth's gravitational pull equals the Sun's. That's especially handy for monitoring transit events, as JWST can keep an eye on its targets for several hours at a time. During the first year of the JWST's operation, scientists will look for signs of an atmosphere on each planet in the TRAPPIST-1 system. We want to know if the planets TRAPPIST-1b, c, g, h have an atmosphere or not, added Lim. And in order to achieve so, we will look for characteristics of chemicals like carbon dioxide, water, and ozone in their transit spectra. As Lim put it, our primary goal is to discover whether or not the planets TRAPPIST-1b and c have an atmosphere. Research into extrasolar planets stands to benefit greatly from the discovery of atmospheres encircling TRAPPIST-1 worlds. Some astronomers speculate that solar flares could deplete the atmospheres of planets with stony surfaces that are so near to their host stars. When a planet is very close to its star, a gravitational phenomenon known as tidal locking causes one hemisphere of the planet to face the star all the time. Because of tidal locking, these atmospheres may undergo considerable changes in their features. In the atmospheres of rocky planets, geological and biological processes can result in varied compositions based on the presence or absence of oceans, plate tectonic movement, and even life which can have a significant impact on the atmosphere's composition. However, before delving into any of these intriguing topics, it's necessary to establish a setting. Life on other planets and in the water, the upcoming publication of the JWST science results has sparked a lot of interest. JWST's ability to analyze liquid water or biosignatures on the TRAPPIST planets has been the subject of numerous theoretical studies. Will the JWST find evidence of life? Reserved optimism was voiced by the astronomers we spoke with, with an emphasis on the term. However, Lim stated that, I believe our observations are a good first step, but it is likely that they will not be able to demonstrate any biosignatures. Unfortunately, we don't know what kind of life there is on those other planets. A small sample of atmospheric models allows us to only speculate, and it's possible that this sample doesn't represent the entire picture. Biosignature discovery announcements are not expected to be made in the first year. It should, at the very least, treat such claims with a healthy dose of skepticism. Biosignatures can only be discovered by playing the long game, according to Lustig Jaeger. For example, a number of abiotic processes are capable of mimicking biosignatures in some fashion. There are two ways to manufacture more oxygen. Photosynthesis, which occurs in live plants, 
and photochemical activities that use light to break apart oxygen-containing molecules. Because of its high concentration in the Earth's atmosphere, molecular oxygen has recently attracted considerable attention as a potential biosignature. Scientists have shown that a wide array of methods exist for producing molecular oxygen. Smaller stars like TRAPPIST-1 may have more frequent planets with these photochemical reactions. According to Lim, it is our responsibility to effectively disseminate what we discovered. A good example of this would be spotting a water feature in the TRAPPIST-1 system planet's spectra, and then communicating how certain we are of the discovery and commenting on its implications. Water and aliens aren't mutually exclusive concepts. TRAPPIST-1 observations may not have much of an impact on history, but that doesn't rule them out. There are many steps involved in discovering habitable exoplanet atmospheres, and the ultimate goal is to find worlds that are similar to our own. An inconsequential nearby star is causing astronomers to remain optimistic, but the outcome is still uncertain. The purpose of Lustig Jaeger is to provide strong detections of several terrestrial exoplanet atmospheres, coupled with a census of a few essential compounds from the JWST mission. There is a citation needed for this. Countless exoplanet atmospheres should be detected by JWST, according to my expectations. Because of the TRAPPIST-1 system, I believe JWST can accomplish what I'm proposing. Thanks for watching this video to the end. Let us know in the comments what you think about this possible discovery on TRAPPIST-1. Do you think there will be alien life? Did you find this video interesting? Don't forget to like and subscribe to our channel for more. We have another interesting video ready for you. Click on it and we'll take you on the next space adventure. And don't forget to subscribe for more videos like this.